What's up, y'all? Today we're going to be learning about these little mini species of gecko that I got in this enclosure behind me. So, without further ado, let's get after it and learn something new. <laughs> So I keep these little yellow-headed geckos in this enclosure right next to my crested gecko and gargoyle gecko breeding setup. And I have a pair of these two in here. And I just have them set up right now and probably what they'll stay in forever is a 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra setup. And I got the canopy lid that goes on top that will house their UV bulb. And I only use a 2.0 UVB because it's actually debated whether this species benefits from UV or not. So you don't need anything crazy on these guys. I wouldn't really recommend going with a 5.0 and definitely wouldn't recommend going with a 10.0 bulb. And then in the back, you can see I have a hanging fixture with a low wattage infrared bulb that's going to give them their ambient temperatures that they need and provide for a little bit of a basking spot. And even though this is a infrared bulb that you can see glowing in the back, I actually don't use it for nighttime because it's beneficial for them to have a little bit of temperature drops in the night. The temperature that this species likes to stay at is the upper mid 70s and they can drop a little bit below that in the nighttime going to the 68 to 73 ish range of temperatures and in here i just have a few different plants the main one that you can see is that yellow flowered bromeliad in the corner and that's going to help create a little bit of a humid micro environment and as you can see it holds a little bit of water in the cup there it might be hard to tell that there's water in there but there is and the plant will benefit from that as well as creating a little bit of a humid pocket in that corner of the terrarium looking to the left i have a small coffee plant and then a philodendron to the left of that and then up in the front right here is a begonia rex it's just a little piece that came from a larger plant, so it's looking a little rough right now, but I think it'll bounce back pretty nicely. And then uh, I'm forgetting what this plant is off the top of my head, but I'll put it up when I put this video together in the corner. And then in the middle there is just a small fern to add a little bit more foliage. Now you can tell that it's a little bit dense of a planted terrarium. And the reason for that is these geckos are very shy. I'm sure that you haven't even been able to locate them yet because of their shy nature and the fact that they are very small. So on the ground here, I just have some leaf litter that I got outside that I sterilized by putting in the oven for about 15 minutes just to make sure that anything bad was off of them like bacteria or fungi that could end up harming the geckos and then at the bottom here I just have a false bottom set up and you can barely tell because of the glare and the light but I basically have a layer of lava rock on the bottom and then on top of that I put a layer of window screen and then I covered that with my terrarium soil mixture that just has some organic perlite with no fertilizer or anything added to it and then some peat moss and then a little bit of sphagnum and leaf litter mixed in to help for drainage then i just have a few rocks over here that i use to bank up that side that i put the bromeliad at 
And then you can see that there's a little water bottle cap sitting there. And that is just filled with Pangea gecko diet. And these geckos are a frugivore species, so they will accept mainly insects, but they will also lick a little bit of that Pangea out of a water bottle cap. So I keep that in there. I only really change that out once a week because that's not gonna be their main source of food as something like a crested gecko or gargoyle gecko would need. Then in addition to this, I just have a lot of branches in here that I also sterilize the same way that I did with the leaves, just putting them in the oven and baking them just for a few minutes to make sure that anything nasty is not on them anymore. And this just gives these arboreal geckos places to climb. And then I even have one on the ground here and that's to feed the cleanup crew that I have in this terrarium. And for that, I just put in a bunch of these springtails that, see if we can get them on camera, but this whole container is basically just full of springtails and I just seeded this terrarium with it. So they'll provide a cleanup service and just make sure that anything nasty that falls to the bottom, like the gecko's feces or anything like that, decaying matter, gets decayed properly and turned into nutrients for the soil. So for humidity on these guys, they prefer it about 50 to 70% relative humidity. So nothing too crazy high. And they like it a little bit on the drier side compared to other geckos that are tropical. Now to keep that humidity in that range, I'll just spray down the cage about once every couple of days. And the reason I don't have to do it every day is because the plants in the terrarium and the layer of leaf litter that I have over top will prevent it from drying out too much. And if it tends to drop too far below this range, then you can always just spray it more often. But I find that for me, about once every two days, a good spray down is just enough to keep the plants watered and to keep them in the desired humidity range. These geckos are found in Nicaragua, Jamaica, and a few other parts of Central America, and a few other islands. And what's cool about these geckos is when there's people in their wild range, they tend to be found on buildings and rock walls and things where people also live. So they're not too shy of people in their natural habitat, but what's funny is when you have them in captivity, they are a very shy species. So this isn't a species that you wanna handle or anything like that. They're not gonna be good for that because they're so small, they're very skittish, um, and they could escape and get into somewhere like the vent or something that you wouldn't want them to. This is more a species that you're going to enjoy watching from the outside of their enclosure. And I'm really excited for these geckos to start becoming a little bit more bold and coming out in the middle of the day so that I can watch them. They are diurnal, meaning they come out during the day. They're not nocturnal like my crested geckos here and my gargoyle gecko. So they are relatively easy to spot during the day if you look pretty closely. Now for feeding these guys, I like to use two different staple insects that I'll be giving them. And that is one, these rice flower beetles that are very easy to culture. Basically all you need is black eyed peas that are uncooked, put them at the bottom of their culture cup, and then you throw in a bunch of these beetles and then they'll lay their eggs on the outside of the beans and then their larvae will climb inside and then they'll hatch out a few weeks later and then you have a bunch of food for your geckos. Now another thing that I feed them as a staple are flightless fruit flies. These are Drosophila uh, hydei, not Melanogaster. Melanogaster is a little bit smaller of a species and these geckos aren't so small that they can't take down the hydei. So I find it's better to give them a little bit larger of a prey item if they can handle it like that. So up at the top there is the female of the pair that I got and she's scurrying around. Uh, you can't really see her too well in the video, but she's not much to look at. She just has a bit of modeling pattern. 
basically is pretty drab compared to the male. But right now they're still a little bit skittish because they're relatively new to me. But hopefully, like I said, in the future, they'll come out a little bit more. And I'm gonna wait until I can get a good shot of the male to show you as well. Cause he's where the true beauty of this species can be seen. All right, so there's my male on the back of the terrarium. He finally came out to play. And as you can see, he's very darkly colored right now. And that's because he's a bit stressed out cause I'm in the room. But you can see he's got that orange head and the dark black body but he will brighten up quite a bit when he's feeling good and isn't stressed out at all. Thank you all for watching today's video. I really appreciate the views. And if you want to see more content like this, please like, comment something down below, and subscribe so you know when I post a new video. And until then, peace. Thank you.